I mean, obviously, I'll just say it. Gary thinks that this hand was not straight in some way. I mean, there's no doubt about it. This is the most disturbed I've ever seen Garrett look at the table. Well, I think everybody's seen what happened. So I'm going to do my best not to get in there and rehash everything. But I'm Bart Hansen, and I was the commentator at the time of this hand that went down on Thursday night. And I want to sort of describe my real-time take and give another perspective from somebody that was watching it, obviously, as it went on. So there are really two parts here that I want to go over. And then we'll talk about Garrett a little bit at the end and what he's done and what his options are. But one of the most common kind of things that I've seen from a lot of professional poker players, myself included, in terms of where they stand on this matter, is when they saw the hand at the time, they thought that there was a very good chance that there was some sort of cheating going on, like 80%, 90%, something like that. As they gathered more information, perhaps watched the rest of the stream, got a little more background about Robbie, they started to go down in confidence that there was cheating. And uh, with the few exceptions, like a, a lot of people do not think that there was any cheating going on. And I just want to come out and say that that's where I kind of sit too. You know, maybe there's a 20 or 30% chance of cheating. Joey Ingram. Uh, the Sulfur Y guys, with Matt Berkey, Doug Polk, they've done like a lot of investigation on this stuff. And Polk sort of feels like that there was cheating going on. I don't really agree with him. I haven't really seen a ton of evidence to really support that I think that there was some sort of cheating going on. But I do want to explain why, especially for some people that really aren't into poker, why this is such a big deal. Because a lot of people, I think, who aren't all that familiar, who might be recreational to novice players or just don't play poker at all, they're coming out and saying to a lot of people that are pros or experienced people, why is this such a big deal? Like, you know, she thought he was bluffing and she called him. So what? Like, why does that make this cheating? So I want to discuss that first. And then uh, I want to talk about this whole thing where she says that she misread her hand uh, as Jack-3, when in fact it was Jack-4. Now, one of the things you have to realize is, and there have been a few cheating scandals in the past with poker, there are certain situations where somebody can play a hand so egregiously that the logical conclusion is that there are there is cheating going on. And the one of the original sort of poker scandals back in the day was the whole Pot Ripper scandal. This was an online scandal that happened back, I think, in 2009, um, where somebody was super using on absolute slash ultimate bet poker. What that means is that somebody had an account where they could see all the cards. Now, there was no specific evidence as to how this was necessarily done or there wasn't a smoking gun that said they could detect an IP address that used this account. However, all of the hand histories for the tournament were leaked and they were plugged into a hand history replayer. And when you saw all of the hands, it became incredibly obvious that the person that was using the super using account or had access to that account could see all the whole cards. This was also similar to the Mike Poxel incident, which happened a couple of years ago, right around this time, actually, at Stones. As you looked at all the hands, he made all the right decisions, and it became very, very obvious that he could see all of the cards. So it was never this extreme with the Pot Ripper example, but I want to give a couple of examples on a situations where you would think that there was immediately cheating. And let's say on a scale of 1 to 100, 1 being no cheating at all, 100 being this hand demonstrates cheating, I'll give you a really clear-cut example. Someone was playing a tournament, and they played every single hand. You could see them play every single hand, and you could see their hands. The only hand that they did not play was when the person to their left was dealt aces preflop, and they were dealt kings, and they just folded. Literally, they played every other hand preflop except that hand. That would be very, very damning evidence 
that there was cheating going on, that the person could see the cards. So that would clearly be like a 100. On a scale of 100, that King's example would be 100. Let's take a look at another example here too. So the hand went down, obviously, very, very quickly. I'm going to overlay a different hand over the top of what actually happened with the same stack sizes, but Robbie holding something different instead of what she held, which was Jack-4, but the exact same action. So it's 133,000 effective, and Garrett raises with a mystery hand to 3,000, and we call in the straddle with four or five of diamonds, and the board comes out king of clubs, queen of clubs, six of diamonds. Garrett bets, same thing, he bets 2,500, and we decide to float, we decide to call, we've got three to a backdoor flush. Okay, we have four or five of diamonds, this guy's a bluffer, right? The turn is the nine of spades, so it's king, queen, six, nine. And Garrett bets here 10,000, just like he did in the original hand. And we don't believe him. So we decide to raise. So we raise it up. We raise it up to 20,000, just like what happened in the regular hand. And now he jams all in. And by the way, this was a huge, huge jam all in. So we're sitting there and we have five high. But we just don't believe Garrett. Um, we don't believe him. Or we say we don't believe him. And we're just going to call anyways. So we make the call here with five high and the river breaks out river like is an ace or something like that. And Garrett tables deuce three of clubs for a missed flush draw. And we win with five high this hand. If we had four or five of diamonds would also be a 100 on a scale of zero to 100 in the sense that the most logical conclusion emphatically would be that the person here with 5-4 of diamonds knows exactly what his opponents have because they're losing to everything else. Now, I'm going to come back to the Jack-4 hand as a professional poker player, and I would say that on a scale of 0 to 100, this is probably like a 95, where when somebody who's very, very familiar with poker strategy and poker looks at this hand right away, you think there is a very, very high chance that this hand was not straight and there was some sort of cheating going on uh, with it. And that was my initial reaction to the hand. Now, I got some flack from a lot of the chat and from the general public that thought that I was somehow accusing Robbie of cheating. I was absolutely not accusing Robbie of cheating. I was actually trying to describe what I thought Garrett was thinking. I mean, obviously, I'll just say it. Garrett thinks that this hand was not straight in some way. I mean, there's no doubt about it. This is the most disturbed I've ever seen Garrett look at the table. And and I don't think and I think Andy's disturbed too. He 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 doesn't. If you looked over there, it's like, whoa, what what just happened here? You're not the only one that gets lucky sometimes, Garrett. You don't have to get that upset. And I can absolutely see Garrett's point of view. And it really looked to me like Andy was kind of confused as well. It's Robbie did that for Andy. Poker. Robbie did that for Andy last night. She did that for you. I'm putting me in this. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I don't know what's going on right now. Like, yep. That was the most insane poker hand I've ever Andy. Not, that can't, like, that's not a poker hand. That wasn't. I don't know what's I, happening. I, so Andy said, that's the most insane thing I've ever seen. That's the most insane poker hand that I've ever seen. And like I said, I was just basically calling it out um, that Garrett obviously thought that there was something that was not straight with that hand. And obviously it's much different if she had ace high. If she had ace high and raised the turn and he jammed and she somehow thought, like let's say she had ace king and she somehow thought he was bluffing, that would make sense. That just doesn't make sense with Jack Four. <laughs> Look at this. This is crazy. No. No. <laughs> and of course, that's because there are a lot of bluffs that Robbie doesn't beat, like Queen Jack or the fact that Garrett has really any pair. If I was at the table and I saw that, especially if I was Garrett, I, I would think right then and there, there was a very, very high chance that something had happened where she had seen my cards. And I think from Garrett's perspective, Robbie is sort of new to the stream she had played in a couple streams, and all of a sudden she's playing this super nosebleed stream with Garrett, Andy, Phil Ivey, 
and you can see like everything's going through his head is like, oh my God, I just got, I got cheated here. Now I have a lot of experience with this. I went over thousands and thousands of hours with the Mike Postle scandal. And one of the things that immediately came to my mind, I went back sort of in my mental Rolodex and was kind of trying to think like, have I seen any weird hands that Robbie played from that particular night? And Garrett is not privy to the hands that we saw before this tonight, in this night. And there was nothing weird about what she had done before from the sample I've seen. But certainly that hand is crazy. Oh, oh, win something. Well, there's two options. Something that was up, which is what Garrett's trying to figure out, or she maybe just fundamentally didn't or doesn't understand that she can't call with Jack for because her explanation didn't make a whole lot of sense. That's a 2000 straddle. That's correct. And then it was just a very weird happenstance <laughs> that looks incredibly bad. I mean, those are really what the two options are. The thing about these situations, and, and just by sheer coincidence, I had been tweeting about the whole chess thing with Magnus Carlton and that guy Hans from, from this week, and there was a cheating scandal over in chess with this guy that beat Magnus. If you were to look at that hand in a vacuum, you'd be like, something was going on here. She knew the cards for sure, 100%, right? But you have to take some of the other stuff that you've seen in the immediate future. That's that's the only thing that I'm saying is just that the other hands that she played before that would seem to me where she didn't really know anything. If you looked in that hand at in a pure vacuum, you'd be like, obviously she knew somehow that what Garrett held. But that's what I'm sort of going back and forth with here in real time. And that was really what I was going back and forth with in real time. If you looked at that hand in a vacuum and you know a fair amount about poker, you would have the same reaction that pretty much every all the pros did with poker. It's like, oh my God, there was some sort of cheating going. Like I said, that's like a 95 out of 100. However, all the other hands that she played from that night really made it seem like she didn't really, she couldn't see the cards. Like she didn't know what was going on. Now I will say, and I'm going to flip back to one of the hands that was played like maybe 20 minutes before. I will say that I might've been a little bit jaded in the sense that I was kind of going into this thinking Mike Postle-esque, kind of Mike Postle-esque where, well, if someone's going to be cheating, they can always see all the cards. When in fact, there is obviously a possibility that you don't see the cards and that maybe someone has access to the live feed or something like that and they can somehow signal in. So there's always this, sort of this rudimentary possibility of cheating where you're not really seeing anything, but someone's somehow signaling in when you're good. But this particular hand here was one of the things that came right to my mind here. And basically what happened was, was that Garrett raised it in the big blind and Robbie called in the middle blind and Andy called behind. And you can see here that Garrett flopped trip queens. So he flops trip queens, he bets out, and then Robbie here is going to float. She's going to float with nothing here with Jack eight of diamonds. Now she's got a backdoor diamond draw, but she has Andy behind him and she calls and then Andy calls too. And Garrett's got trip queens. Now on the turn, Garrett's full. So Garrett's full and she's drawing dead. So she floated him and now she's drawing dead and he's going to come out in bed again and she's going to call again. So she calls again and Andy folds. And this is kind of where you get a little bit, a, a little bit of the controversy where he's going to come out and bet again and he bets really, really big. And then she is going to think about it for a while. Like I said, this was maybe 20 minutes beforehand and people have gone in and they've said, oh, like her, her hip area is vibrating. I, I'm not really going to get on board with necessarily those conspiracy theories. It was kind of interesting though. People have made a whole thing about this. Well, this is sort of an example of where she wanted to kind of call him down light. But this absolutely demonstrated to me, especially at the time, that she certainly didn't know um, what the cards were. Now, the only other really hand that I could remember, and I even made uh, reference to it at the time that it went on, at that time that that 7-8 versus Jack-8 hand went on, was this hand here that came from about uh, an hour and 19 minutes into the into this show. So maybe like an hour before this one went down where she raised with ace king, got a few callers 
and the plot was just under 22,000 and it came out 10-5-3 and Eric Person bet and she's got ace king with the ace of diamonds so she called and now she's heads up and now on the turn backdoor club draw he's going to come out and bet again and now she's going to raise now at the time I had said that this is kind of non-standard it's kind of a non-standard raise because if you knew what your opponent held you are ahead here there's really no reason to raise like if you go and look at it like from a mike possible kind of thing where you might have access or someone might access have access to to know what someone has there really wouldn't be a reason here to raise besides the fact that you have the best hand you would just call and let them bluff off at the end and you win more money that way like, I mean, you could play devil's advocate where I suppose you could raise and then if the guy jammed call off or something like that. But this was really the only other hand that sort of came to mind where I was like, where it was somewhat strange. I was like, oh, like she was raising here when it was somewhat standard as a call, but this doesn't really demonstrate anything. So when I saw those two hands, the fact that she was drawing dead with the jack eight, she called floating and Garrett already had trip queens and then he turned a full house and then this hand too and then also to her reaction i actually thought that her reaction was somewhat natural like i did not really take away that there was any type of like faking going on or anything really strange the whole rest of the night this was after garrett left with the way that she played hands so when i looked in that one hand as a vacuum if you were to show me that seven eight versus jack four hand I would have been like, holy shit, there's a very good chance that there's cheating. But then when you go and look at more of the history, the backstory, the other way that she's played hands, and a lot of other people have looked at her other hands on other streams and all the hands on this stream, and, and I just haven't seen anything that would demonstrate that she was really doing anything you know, wrong in this particular situation. And the issue here is that a lot of poker pros and myself too have trouble reconciling the fact that there's sort of one of two options, right? There's cheating, which I don't really believe happened, or you're dealing with a really, really novice beginning player. And I mean no disrespect by that to Robbie. I mean, other people have come out and she said that she's dumb, and I think that's entirely uncalled for, but she just might not be all that experienced. And when I say you can't call with jack four. It takes a certain sort of level of knowledge to understand that that's a call you can't make. And it's kind of the same thing with like the four or five of diamonds hand. When we all see this and then Garrett happens to have a worse hand, alarm bells really, really go off because usually in a situation like that, in a vacuum, there's a very, very high probability that something might be up. But there is one other thing that I want to address, and it's just crazy because it adds haziness to this whole situation. Here's the thing. Robbie made absolutely no mention of the fact that she, quote unquote, misread her hand. After this all went down, in the interview that she did later on, about an hour later, she claims that she actually thought that she had jack three for a pair of threes. And she did have jack three suited the hand before that she played. So that kind of lends itself to possibly maybe she was confused or something like that. If she had mentioned at the time when she turned her hand over at the reveal, if she had said, oh my God, I thought I had a three. I can't believe this. I misread my hand. We wouldn't even be talking about this. This wouldn't even be an issue at all. If she had just said, oh my God, I misread my hand. But there's something go kind of weird going on where I go back and forth where this adds haziness to it. Personally, I, I don't believe that. I don't believe that she misread her hand. When you look at all her mannerisms throughout the hand, now she did say, is a three any good? But I kind of thought about that as just speech play. If you were in a situation where you're going to make a very, very light call with somebody and it's for $125,000 or $130,000 and you think you have a three, and then when you turn your hand over and it's actually jack four, and then you see the situation that it kind of causes, wouldn't you say at the time, I misread my hand? So there's kind of one of two things that's going on here, neither of which, by the way, means that she's guilty of anything. What I think, 
actually went on was was that she either got it in her head, and again, this is just my opinion, that it might look better if she said that she misread her hand, or somebody told her to say that she misread her hand, like this little tweet that this guy says here. I don't think it really matters, but if she didn't say that she misread her hand, I think that there would be even a more clear-cut case that she wasn't cheating because I am not the only one that just thinks that this just adds haziness to us because it's so kind of at least unbelievable to me in this particular situation that she misread her hand without any type of reaction and all the speech stuff that went down where she's never really mentioning that she has a three. She says, I have a pure bluff catcher. I know that that doesn't really necessarily mean anything. The other thing that I have to sort of reconcile though too is, is that if she is a novice, it's, it is possible, it is possible that she doesn't understand the situation as it's happening. Meaning she just thinks that Garrett is really, really mad at her because he, cause she beat him in a pot. She doesn't understand that, no, Garrett thinks that he's actually got cheated. And now it's time for me to speak up and say, oh, actually I thought I had a three. I didn't say that, but I thought I had a three and it would have quelled the entire situation. But again, you need to be at some sort of level to understand that that's what's going on, that Garrett thinks he's being cheated. And if you actually misread your hand, you need to come up and say that. So that's one possibility. Like I said, the other possibility is she didn't misread her hand. She just thought, I'm going to call this guy. He's been bullying me around. He's a huge bluffer, which, which very well might be true. But the whole misread of the four and the three just kind of adds a little bit of haziness to it. And it's kind of very, very unfortunate. Again, I don't think any cheating really went on in here. I'm, I'm about maybe 75, 25, no cheating. There has to be some evidence that's going to come out to, um, to convince me otherwise that there was some sort of impropriety here. Now, the whole Garrett thing after the fact adds a whole nother layer of complexity. Of course, after the fact, she gave Garrett the money back and there are different sort of versions of the story of what exactly happened. Garrett said that she offered the money back to him. She said that he sort of bullied her into giving it back. And then Ryan Feldman sort of said there was kind of an in-between where she said, what can I do to make this right to you? And Garrett said, well, you could give me the money back and that would make it right. So there's a little bit of haziness in that. I was fully expecting at the end of the night or the next day to see a statement from Garrett that said, I was heated in the moment. I thought I was cheated. I was offered the money, I guess, in his eyes. So I accepted it, you know, obviously because he knows he's been cheated in the past. It might be the only time that he's ever going to get it. He knows, by the way, that he's good for it, where if he comes to his own conclusion that he wasn't cheating, he's going to give it back. I will give it back or I'll let an investigation play out and whatever that investigation finds or if I look at this and I don't think I'm cheated, I'll definitely give it back. I'll give the money back. That's what I was expecting. I was totally expecting that type of statement. Instead, he doubled down. He doubled down. And that night he came out with a statement saying that he definitely thought he was cheated. And then the next night he retweeted uh, a Doug Polk video claiming that there was there was cheating. So he does not look great in this particular situation, I, I have to say. And I think part of this has to do with the fact that she's a woman and she felt bullied possibly into giving the money back. That's another sort of weird, weird thing here. The fact that she gave the money back. I got to tell you, the fact that she gave the money back convinces me even more that she wasn't cheating. If you have anybody who knows any poker cheats or anybody who's trying to scam money, are they going to give the money back? I just don't think so. I also think that the quote unquote word salad that people are referencing when Garrett was sort of trying to interrogate her about why did you make this call? Why did you play the hand this way? And, you know, her response was just didn't make any sense. It was pretty much nonsense. I actually think that that is in her favor. It kind of demonstrates the fact that she is at like a very, very beginning level and that she doesn't know 
that you can't call with Jack for or that it's a very, very unprofitable call and no one would make that call. And to extrapolate out from that point, she also probably doesn't understand the reaction that Garrett made where he thought that he was being cheating because this isn't just like $1,000. This is $109,000. So I think all of sort of the mishmash explanation in terms of the poker stuff that she has said that doesn't make sense is really an argument in favor of her where it was really just a beginner kind of making a call because she thought that she was bullied around. But I wanted to make this video to show people why at first it looks so bad. But I think that I'm with a, a great majority of the sort of poker community that kind of felt maybe right away that there was cheating. And then as we look back into it, kind of think that there isn't cheating. Now, to conclude, I think that there's going to be some good that is going to come out of this. Because I know that Nick Vertucci and Ryan Feldman are very, very serious about doing everything in their power to make sure that this show and their system is on absolute lockdown. And I think what might come out of this whole thing is company, a company or companies coming in and a set of procedures and protocols being instituted for the Hustler Casino live stream that might very well become like the gold standard for all streams. Meaning if you want to start a stream and be taken seriously and you want to run big games, you have to go through this process with this company. And this is something that Hustler is going to start. And then you're sort of quote unquote certified where you have all these procedures and protocols in place. I don't know if they're ever going to find anything like looking back. That's so hard you know, forensically, I think it's really more important to look forward and to set this sort of standard where everyone has confidence that the technology is locked down there. I mean, it's never going to be foolproof, right? But it's going to, you know, you're trying to make it as little a chance as possible that anyone can cheat in a game like this, especially at these stakes. So even though this is really sort of unfortunate and it made mainstream news, USA Today, New York Post, stuff like that. I think it's sort of the kick in the butt that live streams needed to really, really take security very, very seriously. And again, get things sort of standardized where we can all in the poker community have confidence that these shows are very, very straight and with good integrity.